There's one really easy way to sound just like a pro, and that's to put a little bit of wobble in your sound. It's really easy to do, and today I'm gonna show you how. Hi, Paul here from Trumpet Takeaway, helping you do more on the trumpet. This channel is very much for players who play for fun. You'll find tips and techniques, as well as get help, advice, and information on a whole range of fantastic trumpet-related stuff. So please consider subscribing. Just click on um, the subscribe button down in the bottom right-hand corner, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell, because that way you'll be the first to know when I post new videos. Okay, let's get into the video. Listen to these two phrases. Which one do you think sounds better? Now, if you thought the first phrase sounded better, there's no point in watching this video anymore because you're probably not um, too keen on vibrato. If you thought the second one sounded better, and I'm guessing that was most of you, then that's what we're gonna talk about today. Of course, it sounded better because it had more warmth, there was movement in the sound, there was more color to it. It was a more professional sound. And on the trumpet, there are several ways to do vibrato, but today we're gonna to talk about the two main techniques, jaw vibrato and hand vibrato. I use both of these techniques, depends on what I'm playing. So let's start with jaw vibrato. Basically, all you need to do is move your jaw up and down like this. Now, there's a really good way of learning this technique and practicing this technique so you can get it just right. But you're gonna need a straw for that. So see if you can find one, then I'll show you what to do. With your straw, put it in your mouth and gently press the straw against your top teeth like this. And with it pressed against your top teeth, touch your lower teeth against the straw. But imagine the straw is red hot like this. When you practice any new technique, always go to the extreme with it. Really exaggerate the movement because that way you'll feel a stronger sensation and you'll be able to carry that onto the instrument. So make sure you really drop that jaw a long way. Now let's try that on the trumpet. Remember the sensation, remember to exaggerate the movement. Probably won't sound particularly nice to begin with. Just try it on a long middle G don't get the vibrato going right away. Hold the note for maybe a beat first, then get the jaw moving, like this. When I'm using vibrato, I tend to do it that way too. Not as wide as that, but I tend to get the note first, just kind of let it settle and then add the vibrato because it sounds very different than putting the vibrato on immediately. See what you think. Hand vibrato is done with the hand. And the most beautiful trumpet vibrato I've ever heard was done with this technique. It was the sound of the late great Maurice Andre, the world famous um, French trumpet soloist. And he played the piccolo trumpet a lot. And if you've never heard him, you really, really must listen to him on YouTube. I'll leave a link below. Um, it's an exquisite sound, it's absolutely amazing. 
So there are lots of ways to do this, but this approach I think is a, a good introduction because um, it doesn't always sound great if you just kind of rock your hand around. So if you take your instrument, your trumpet or your cornet, and just place your fingertips on the tops of the valves. And all I want you to do is move your fourth finger onto your second valve. So you're just gonna go like that. And just keep going back and forth with that fourth finger onto the second valve, back to the third valve, just like that. Quite a smooth action running in parallel with the lead pipe and the bell. That's the important bit. Now, let's do that again. And this time, I don't want you to move your fingers onto a different valve. I want you to pretend that they are stuck to the tops of the valves. And you're gonna move the hand a lot less this time, um, but in the same direction. That's really, really important. Keep it parallel with the lead pipe and the bell. And then just kind of agitate the instrument gently, just like that. That's it, like that. And that's pretty much what you do. So let's see what that sounds like on the trumpet. And we'll do what we did before. We'll just hold a long middle G and just get it going for a beat first. And then keeping your fingers stuck to the valves, just agitate the instrument. But you can exaggerate this because again, we want that sensation. We want that kind of nice wide vibrato like we had before. And then you can reduce it after that. So let's see what that sounds like. So they're the two techniques, practice both of them and find the sound that you really like. The next step is to choose a tune or a melody Make sure it's got some long notes so you've got plenty of opportunity to put your vibrato on and then just be creative with it. Create those colors and those different types of sounds and you'll be sounding like a pro in no time. So your challenge for today is to see if you can play four different types of vibrato. We're just gonna begin on one single note so I can show you what I mean. Let's try it very, very fast. Get the vibrato going as fast as you can. Now let's try it very slowly. Now let's try it really wide. And finally, we'll try it really narrow. So we have four different variations on vibrato. You might be wondering how you can use those different types of vibrato and what type of piece fits a different type of wobble. So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. Maybe you want to play a big operatic aria or a big tune and you wanna produce a really big sound, just like the famous, world famous tenors do in opera houses across the world. Then you might want to use your vibrato, something like this.
you might want to play a really beautiful, sweet dolce melody, just like a world famous violinist. Or maybe you want to play a big West End or Broadway show tune. Whatever type of music you want to play, learn to do vibrato really well and you'll sound amazing. Today's Watch That is kind of based on vibrato because if you do vibrato really, really wide, but you also um, combine that with one of the techniques I gave you in my previous video, which I called filling in the gap. If you put those together, you come up with what we call the shake. Kind of a neat sound. Hope you've enjoyed today's takeaway. Any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so, and I'll see you next time.